Welcome to What in the Shiba with Suji and Ed. We're just two Asian Americans talking shit about shit. With Archie. Archie. He's such a big boy, but not a big boy now. I know. I've got making fun of you. So for those of you, we are we would like to start off by apologizing for taking a unannounced two week break, but that's because we ended season one and now this is season two. Two? It is? I guess. Great. Season two. <laughs> We've been renewed. <laughs> <laughs> Good for us. We didn't get canceled. It's really entirely up to us, but you know, let's go with it. Oh, but in reality, scheduling life is just life. been yeah. really crazy for me. But and you. um, how has it been? I feel like when was the last time I talked to you? What was going on in my life? Um, since I since our last episode, I went to Vegas with my daughter for a volleyball tournament, which was insane. I haven't even told you about it. It was crazy. It's, it was at the Mandalay Bay. It was like 20,000 people attended this tournament. What? It was a hundred, it was in like the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Like you do know how, like, it's huge. Mm -hmm. 120 courts going at the same time. Like hotels One, are just- 20? 120. It's crazy. It's crazy. And there were girls from all over the country there to play. Like some girls were like, you know, our team's really good put together team. But then there were some teams that were like, they looked like they were in the military. They all walked out, same exact hair, same exact face, oh, same yeah. exact uniform, same exact shoes, same exact everything, like same exact arm sleeves, everything. This reminds me of, if you've ever watched um, Pitch Perfect, that German. You like that, <laughs> yeah, it was German like that. singing group. Anyway. Um, I don't think you noticed, but I love that you're just like waving around Archie's Eeyore. <laughs> As like a baton. Come here, come over here. And so it was really crazy. And my husband and my other daughter didn't come with us. So it was just like all on me to like. Oh, it was just you and all the girls? Well, it was me and my daughter and then other parents and then the whole oh, team. Oh, okay, okay. But it was just hard because there's a lot of, you know, get up, eat, tr you know, practice, play, dinner, you know, so it's like a really tight schedule of so much volleyball. Are the majority of the girls' parents there as well? Or is there just like four or five chaperones? At least one parent has to come with each child. Like they have, well, because you have to buy their food, you have to make sure that they're ushered up and back and forth to their hotel room. So they yeah, can't yeah, just yeah. like, you can't That's just have lot. chaperones. Um, it was so fun though. It was so much fun, but it was exhausting. And then I got back and then the day after we got back, my it's girls, crazy took a little spring break and then we went to Chicago and now we're back and it was just, it was wonderful. But I'm just like, so happy. I say this every time I go somewhere, I'm like, I'm so happy to be back. And I'm so happy to like be back on my schedule because when I get off my schedule, everything feels wrong. You can do it. Come here. Can you do it? I'm here. I'm just waiting for you. You can't even get up here. Come on, Archie. <laughs> Taunting did it me. earlier. Come here. Come on. I'm sitting here. He's like, I don't think I'm allowed to do this. Do it. Come on, Archie. You can come, do it. Come and get me. Come on. Come and get me. Come on. We were talking about a dog who last night whined at the bottom of the bed steps waiting for me to carry him up. I'm like, Oh, you're what? just a little prince. What are you doing? You're just a little prince. How have you been? Everything's good? Yeah, good. Um, you know, just stuff. I ate um have you ever had mala before? It's like made from a Sichuan pepper and it numbs your mouth. Is it like a candy? No, 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 no. It's like this like sauce, pepper, spice. I don't know what it is. So mala is the pepper itself and it goes into dishes is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like comes from a Sichuan pepper and it's this pepper spice, a spice I guess they make from pepper mm -hmm. that like numbs your mouth. Mm -hmm. There's this restaurant um, in Korea town called Chimak that has like a mala menu. They mm. make like a tteokbokki and like gizzards and I like I don't like when tofu. my mouth is numb. It was weird. It, does it, can you, you can still taste. You can taste and your mouth doesn't go like numb. You just got anesthesia numb. It does this like weird tingly I've had like a, dancing I've thing. I've had some kind of berry that does that. It like, it makes it like feel like fuzzy for lack of a better word, like numb, but like. Yeah, the best. Description I had, because I said it while I was eating it, I was like, it feels like there's little people dancing on my tongue. <laughs> like there was this like, it's kind of almost like a pop rock, 
sensation yeah, yeah, without yeah, yeah. the popping. Yeah. There's like yeah, this that's weird a good way. feeling yes. on your it's tongue. It's frizzly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, While we were in Chicago, we had, um, sorry to cut you off. We had um, this little can berry candy that when you eat it and it like coats the inside of your mouth, when you eat sour things, they're sweet. And so we could like take like chunks like lemon and like wedges and just like bite down into them. And it just tasted like you were drinking lemonade. It was oh, so cool. So weird. We should do that one time. My mouth, I'm salivating thinking about it because that's funny. Th the thought of biting into a lemon, obviously like I can't do that. It's too sour. I don't I like it. Lemons. It was, oh yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, if it tastes Citrus like sugar, fruit, it really does. But um, that's funny you say that because a couple times I've been like, we should do that one chip challenge on the show. I heard a kid died doing that. Yeah. I don't want to die <laughs> from a chip. Like that would be like, yeah, it's, it's really, it can be dangerous. Like some people have to go to the hospital. Yeah. Or, like some people like start hallucinating. <laughs> so let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like as Koreans, maybe we should be able to. Oh, see what you've done. Oh man, I'm sweating. You've leveraged my Koreanness against me and now I have to do it. Bye our GC leader. Yeah, but other than that, it was like the mala ate some food. Someone hit me while driving the other day. Like punched you in the face? No, like <laughs> someone hit me. Like my car oh, like I hate drove that. into me. They merged into me. Luckily, they took full liability. That's good. Um, That's why they say no new news. No news is good news. Yeah. There's too much news. Something bad happens. What was the other thing, Ron? You ate raw marinated crab? Yeah, I ate more raw marinated crab. Like, uh, what is. Yeah, yesterday. How was it? It was actually really good. Really? Should I try it? I'm afraid. It was like. Yes, I have never tried raw marinated crab. I know I'm Korean. I just, the the texture of it is so that, scares the me. So that texture does, it, it feels like oysters kind of. Oh, okay. I can eat oysters. Like, but it's like less seafoody than oysters. Oh, okay. It didn't have, I don't like seafood. It didn't have a seafood flavor at all. The one is marinated in soy, so you just taste like soy saltiness. Okay, and so it's umami. just the texture. And the other one, they had spicy, which was like yang yum. I feel like I would like that. That was delicious. I bet. Ron preferred the soy. I preferred the spicy. I okay. Think. But it's really good. They give you this like rice that you mix stuff in. You put some of this... You just like squeeze, squeeze out the crab meat. And, but it sounds weird and it looks gnarly kind of. Yeah. I, I get it. You My know? mom loves it and she eats it all the time, but I just like could never get around how just like it was so gelatinous good. it looks. It was so good. It was funny because the place I went to, the crab house, they were like going around helping the non-Korean people how to eat it. But like they didn't show me and Ron how to eat it. And like right after I was like waiting for all the food to come out first so I can get like footage of it in first. After they drop off the last dish dish, the one Ajima comes over literally like five seconds after the dish is dropped off and she goes, Where am I go? No. She's like, Why aren't you guys eating? And I was like, Oh, we we are. But I also didn't want to draw attention <laughs> to the fact that how to eat it. <laughs> yeah, so that I didn't know and that I was gonna Fine. film. So I kept being like, Ron, ask her how to eat it because you don't speak Korean. But you've never, you've seen it before. I, I've seen how to eat I've it. I've seen never it before, eat it, but then it. like, you know, when you're Do sitting you down, yeah, 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 yeah. The, it's on the table. But you know when like you've seen stuff, prepared yourself a hundred times, but when you're sitting down, all of a sudden you're like, I don't remember anything yeah. and I don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. It's like when somebody asks me what my favorite song is and I'm like, song? What is a song? <laughs> yeah. Like, even though I know or like every song, every I cannot week, think of you're one like, at all. Every week when you're like, how was your week? And I was like, uh, <laughs> what is week? I woke up this morning. <laughs> well, that's good. Right, exactly. But but yeah, it was. it's actually, it was like really good. Cause like People yesterday, multiple times afterwards, I kept being like, that was really good. And Ron was like, I know. Fine, I'll go get some. It is really good. It is very pricey. Yeah. <laughs> it's very pricey. A lot of people make it at home, like get like frozen crab yeah. and then make it at home. But I don't know if I'm gonna do all that. Yeah, but it was really good. good. And we also ate the sea urchin. Yeah, the uni bowl, um, sea, like uni was like live. They give it to you in the shell and it like, was moving till we left. I don't like uni. Yeah. I love uni. I want to love it. I I like it when it's like mixed in with stuff. Like if it's in yeah, a no, pasta, it is. but it, oh okay. It's like uh, it's like a rice and stuff. There's stuff in there, and you mix it around. But you can still taste the uni. In fact, I dropped one of the uni on the table, and I was like, "Well, this is the most expensive part, so I'm just gonna eat it now." Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty much it. Okay. Ask me how Chicago was. 
How was Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, you need a segue. Um, Chicago was great. It snowed. This is your first time there? No, no. I've been to Chicago a couple times. The I, I took the girls time. there because I love Chicago. I love it there. It's one of my favorite cities. In fact, my daughter was like, I don't think I'll ever leave Los Angeles, but if I do, I probably will move to Chicago. Like we love it there. I she loved it. Um, it feels like New yeah. York, but everybody's just a little she bit. She didn't take her during the summer. Nicer. Or the winter time. I know. <laughs> well, it did snow. It snowed while we were there. Oh, that's like I was crazy. like, happy spring in, break in, <laughs> in April. April. Um, it rained and it snowed the entire time, except for the last maybe hour and a half we were there. I was like, let's head to the airport, girls. It was <laughs> nice sunny weather. <laughs> so annoying. Um, but it was actually really nice to be in the cold. I actually love it when it was cold, but we couldn't do the river walk. We were gonna go to the top of the Willis Tower, but it was so foggy. Like they have a camera, like a video like of it. And I was like, you can't see anything. Uh, so we just went to a bunch of museums. You guys could have at least gone in the glass overlook and they could have looked down. No, to, but you couldn't see anything. Dad. It was, no, but it was oh, cloudy from there. Oh, like you couldn't see anything, You could, so you can look down. Oh, so then it could have felt like you're standing on a, on a cloud. <laughs> Like, we yeah. paid three hundred dollars. I'm not paying for them to pretend like they're on a cloud. Yeah. They can do acid for that in the future. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> way cheaper. Wait, right, exactly. Um, but while we were there, we were having dinner. This is this is a very like serendipitous story. Things like this never happened to me. So we're in Chicago, and I get a text from my friend Ashley. Now Ashley is my friend. We've been friends for like 25 years. Like she was in my wedding, I, weddings. I was in her wedding. Uh, we had we had our daughters like two weeks apart. Like I I was the person who helped give her like her shots for her like in vitro treatments. Like this is like one of my best friends in the world. And I, she's married to like my best friend from high school. Like this is like oh, a friend. Weird. And it's like a movie. But we don't talk all the time. We're both moms, we're both yeah. busy. So it's not like the kind of thing where you just like text each other. We just don't have time for that. So time will, but she's one of those friends where like, Time will pass, you get back together, you yeah. just pick up right where you left off. She's, how, she's one of those. I feel like I'm one of those friends. I'm not very good at communicating, yeah. but like- We're right back, yeah, yeah. we're right back in it. So she just sends me this random text. Now mind you, she hasn't text, we've been texting for maybe like a month or so, maybe more. And she sends me this random text. She's like, hey, me and my daughter are having dinner right now. We're just thinking about you and talking about the girls and we miss you. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. And she sends us a picture of them like at dinner. And she's like, send us a picture of you guys. I was like, okay. So I sent a picture of us. And I was like, we're in dinner right now, but we love you, we miss you so much, we're in Chicago. I push send on my phone and literally two seconds later, my phone rings. I pick it up and she goes, shut the fuck up. And I was like, <laughs> bitch, you shut the fuck up. I was like, what? And she's like, I'm in Chicago. And I was like, what? <laughs> she and I were both in Chicago at the exact same time, completely unplanned. She lives That's in Atlanta. Crazy. I live in what LA. What was she there for? Spring break, oh. just to hang out with her daughter. And I was like, well, we're staying at this hotel. We're staying at the Pendry. She's like, we're staying next door. I was like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like, so we got to spend like an entire like day and a half with her and her daughter, who's like my daughter. And you know, my daughter's like her daughter, like in Chicago. It How was, many days into the trip? I would, we were, that was our, Second day there? Oh, wow. Yeah, her too. So That's like, crazy. the only way I say that it would have been crazier is if we were just like walking down the street and I was just like, hey, like, what? Like, that girl her. looks like, you oh, go on. like Auntie Ashley, <laughs> you know? It was so, such a wonderful like coincidence. I was so happy to see her. It was such a great moment. The second we saw each other, we like met at this museum. <laughs> Which museum? Uh, we National went to a few. Street. I don't wanna call them museums. They're like, you know, like World of Color or like the Museum oh, of yeah, Illusions yeah, 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 yeah. or like the stuff like the yeah. kids like. This one the was- social media museums. Yes. Yeah. This one was really cool though. This was, yeah, interactive museums. This was, um, I have it on my phone. Picasso one? No, it was, it was an arty one. Not the ice cream one? No, the God, ice cream I one sucked. One. Yeah. The color, wow, the color world, World of Color one at the bottom of the Willis Tower was our favorite. It was really cool. I hate calling it that. What? The Sears Tower. Oh. I mean, you gotta call it what it's called. People I are gonna call it the Bruce Willis Tower. Why? I don't know. I was like, wait, is there a movie with no, just because no. it's called the Willis that's Tower? That's the Nagasaki okay. Tower. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's here. It um, is here. In Culver City. Is it Culver City? I think so. Not downtown. No, I think it was in Culver. Maybe you're right, maybe you're right. Yeah. Um, we digress. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was really awesome. So it was really good that to see her. That is really serendipitous. And like, right, like what are the chances? Yeah. Of all the, the only way it would have been like more movie like if she was like, 
this looks like the restaurant I'm in. And then you guys were like at the same restaurant at the same time. Wait, that is the exact same view I can <laughs> yeah. see out of the window I'm sitting next to. Wait, I think like... that's the back of my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been like, no way that would have happened. Yeah. We would have heard Susie laughing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, it was really cool. And the food there was, we went to this restaurant called, the food was amazing. The food in Chicago is some of the best. Food we went to this really restaurant good. called Maple and Ash and it was so good. We went to Lou Malnati's and it was really disappointing. I wish we hadn't gone there. There's so many better places. I love Lou Malnati's. You so. do? Okay, well, they reached out to me. I'm going to have, uh, they reached out. They're like, hey, you're in Chicago. Come to, you know, Lou Malnati's. We'd love to host your dinner. Uh, but we'd already left by then. So I'm going to see if they want to send me a couple of free frozen pizzas. <laughs> they ship them all over the country. Yeah, when I used to, I lived in Chicago for a year. And, uh. Luminati's was so Lou Malnati's, Lou not Mal Luminati's. No, Lu Illuminati's when you is very say, different. But thing. when you say it, I think it's supposed to be like Luminati's. I don't think it is. Well, I say it, it's Lou Malnati. It's, it is Lou Malnati's, <laughs> yes. but it's Luminati's. I went there once like 10 years ago and it was so good. And it I don't was. know if the quality has gone down or they were just really busy. Like, I don't, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt because that pizza is delicious. Um, but like, the service was amazing. <laughs> it was just average, but the food, the pizza was good. And we had Chicago hot dogs, and we had I mean all kinds of shit. I feel so bloated still, but it was really fun. It was really great. I love yeah, Chicago. Chicago's um, Polish sausages are some of the best things in the world. Those Vienna sausage. Where? Bags. I don't know where to get that, but anyway. Um, right near downtown, University of Chicago. There's this place called Jim's. Anyone's visiting Chicago. We basically didn't gyms. leave Michigan Avenue just because it was too cold and rainy. Yeah. I like love, hate Chicago. Really? It's like too cold and it's too hot. Mm. But everything else I love. The weather is a big part though, you true. know? True. It's true. It's true. But on that note, we are going to now segue to Am I the Assholes? Because that not? was the most <laughs> unseg smooth segue uh, ever. Uh, and on that note, <laughs> there, please, yeah, reshoot that. Uh, but but and, keep the old one in. But on that note, what note? <laughs> it's supposed to be a springboard to the next thing. It's supposed to have continuity. Speaking of which, that, speaking of <laughs> things that we're talking about. <laughs> So funny story, while we're in Chicago, we're on our way to the airport and the, our Uber driver was this Korean lady. She was a little bit older and she found out that I was Korean and it was- Cause I, you look Korean? Well, cause I'm, I look Korean. Well, <laughs> but she asked me if I was Korean and I told her yes. And I think because, you know, we have that in common, she felt this like connection to me and she starts talking about like really personal things. And I was like, Okay, like my daughter's in the car, my husband's in the car, and she's speaking in English. And she's like, you know what? My friend died last week. And I was like, oh, geez. Oh, God. Oh, I'm geez. so sorry. And she's like, it was a freak accident. And, you know, life is so fleeting and you never know. And she was like, really upset. And I was like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Like, like, that's so terrible. Like, it's true. Like, life is so short, but you're scaring my daughter. <laughs> and she was like, really, like, anguished and I was just like yeah I understand that you feel this connection to me and that's really nice but like you I don't know, think this is appropriate this is not appropriate <laughs> yeah. and I don't know your life and that's so personal and she's just like telling me like what his job was and about his kids and I was just like <laughs> yeah but you can't even say that yeah. I wouldn't even know how to segue I'd be like oh look it's nice uh, right I was right. like I, I don't my and my older daughter was like Dude, I'm freaking out. I was like, I know, I know, babe. Just, 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 just put your head down. We're almost at the airport. And like traffic was so bad and she was driving so crazy. And she was like honking at cars. She's like cutting people off while she's telling me about her dead friend. I was just like, ah, this is too much. I can't take it. It's too much, please. Get me to the airport. Just get me somewhere. Get me out of here. One of the worst car service experiences I have ever had was also in Chicago. I was riding in a taxi because Lyfts and Ubers weren't a thing back then uh -huh. with my mom. And this guy is driving. He's speaking in a foreign language. I think he was South Asian. He had a Bluetooth in his ear, <laughs> but I didn't see it because it was in his left ear. Oh. So at first I was like, oh my God, he's speaking to us. And I don't think it's even in English. <laughs> and I was like, what is happening? And he was driving like a maniac. Yeah, yeah. And at one point he ran a red light. Jesus a Christ. Cop car pulls him over. No. And at that point, while he's getting a ticket, I'm like, I'm getting out. 
Yeah. I'm getting out. We had only been in it for like three minutes. So like got all that happened in three minutes. Yeah, it wasn't even like that long. Like, like, like the fare wasn't even up that high. So I was just like gave him whatever it was. And then just, and he was like, you can't leave. I was like, bro, you're getting a ticket for almost killing us. P.S. I was I like, can do whatever I can the leave. fuck I want. Yeah. Are you insane? Am I your prisoner? I was like, like we are getting fuck? out. That's but, crazy. Yeah. Speaking of crazy driving stories. Speaking of. We have Am I the Assholes? Uh, and I know that doesn't sound like it makes any sense. But it makes sense to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, it will make sense to you in a second. You'll see why. Because the first story is, do you want to read it? Sure. Am I the asshole for not telling my Uber passengers that I speak Chinese? Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Ni hao, bitches. I'm white. I took four semesters of Mandarin in college. I picked up my Uber passengers tonight who were international Chinese students, which is not unusual. It's a relatively large college town. I did my usual Uber driving routine, asked a question or two to gauge willingness for conversation. If I get one word answers and or no follow-up reciprocating questions, I leave it alone. They gave off a major no interest in talking vibe, so I left it alone. Cut to three minutes later, and they start talking about something which, for the sake of their privacy, I feel legitimately uncomfortable even sharing anonymously here. It was really fucked up, heavy personal shit. I'm not a fluent speaker, but good enough to follow 80% of a conversation, and it was getting very uncomfortable. I guess the reason I asked this is because I'm not 100% sure that if they had any idea I could understand them, they would have been talking about what they were talking about. I felt like I was almost... Lying by omission. Oh, okay. I could have interjected super briefly in Chinese to let them know I understood, but I felt like that would have been more awkward than just letting them believe I didn't understand. You did the right thing. Yeah. You did the right thing. There's no reason to let them have any idea that you knew for one second anything at all that they were talking about. That I think would just be more mortifying in what already sounds like a very touchy situation. Yeah, and also it's not even just that you understood Chinese. You then listened, actively paid attention. Well, that's not unfair. He's they're in a car together. No, no, no. They can, but like you could also like zone out. You think the worst of everybody. No, no, no. You're, okay, no, I'm so not you're saying, telling me. I'm not you're saying. telling me you're sitting in a car with people. They start telling some talking about some juicy shit. They think you don't understand. You're not going to listen. Well, but that's what I'm trying to say. Even if they were speaking in English and were in America and they were talking about juicy shit. You, as a driver, would pretend like you're not paying attention. I wouldn't be like, oh, girl, that's crazy. Well, no, I don't think that is what they're saying. I think he's saying, like, should I be like, do you guys want to keep talking about this just so that you know this sounds very sensitive and I understand what you guys are saying? That's what I mean. Even if it was English, I feel like you're supposed to just, like, pretend like you don't hear, you know? But the reason they're doing it in Chinese is because they think he doesn't understand. They might, but if the person- might, 100 they don't think oh, this white, white guy speaks Chinese. You know I didn't see the white part. Oh, okay. I was like, what are you saying? I was about Edward? to be I was about to be like, you got in a car with a Chinese looking person. No, There's a risk. This guy yeah, was right. white. This guy's white. They have no reason to think that no. he speaks yeah. Chinese. I agree with you though. Yeah. Just leave it as is. <laughs> Stop. Archie! Am Stop. I the asshole for peeing Stop. on the carpet? Stop, Stop peeing. Stop peeing. Stop peeing. You're just making it go everywhere, Ed. <laughs> That's would make him stop. that's a lot of pee. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just, um, so in this case, no. I actually think you would have been more the asshole if you'd been like, surprise, I speak Chinese and I know all your fucking secretive shit. Yeah. That's what I think. I feel like sometimes we, we because we're in our bodies, we feel like it's the right thing to do sometimes saying stuff. And I don't think it is. No, we don't always have to say everything. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to not. Did the dog peeing on the floor throw you off a little bit? No, I just was wondering <laughs> if I should, almost like akin to, to like when you know, when you like sometimes make an infidelity mistake and sometimes you're like, should I tell them and should I not? That is different. <laughs> that is very different. That's that why, was you making why, an active choice to cheat that's on why someone. I was, yeah. uh, I was that's like, why I was contemplating if I should talk I was about like, it. If you feel like that's the same, we should talk about something <laughs> because that's not the same. <laughs> well, not the same same, but like sometimes I do feel like if you didn't, aren't going to do it again, maybe you shouldn't tell them. Edward? I'm not saying I would ever do it, but I just feel like you watch movies sometimes and sometimes you're like, you know, Maybe you shouldn't have said anything. Let me think about that. I'm going to put myself in the situation, right? Am I the cheater or the cheated on? 
Okay, let's say I'm the cheated on and my husband cheated on me one time but was never going to cheat on me again. Would I want like, to know? Or like, you know those ones, those movies or something, stories where it's like 20 years later before he dies, he's, it's like, don't tell her. Don't tell her. Leave it alone. That I think is a different scenario, right? Because yeah. there's nothing to be done, right? It's already been done. That All that time has passed. But if you're talking about like my husband being, let's just say he he's not, he would never, I don't think he, anyway, let's say my husband was unfaithful to me one time. Would I want Recently. to know? Right. In recent times, would I want to know? Yes. I'll tell you why. Because he being unfaithful to me speaks to a greater problem in our marriage, which could potentially lead to further problems in our marriage. And though he may think he only will do it once and will never do it again, there's no guarantee on that unless the repair is done on what made him do that in the first place. The end. Yeah. Yes, right? Kind of, yeah. And also, I should have the opportunity to fucking kill him. <laughs> yeah. That's not fair that yeah. you take that away from me. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that either, but sometimes I watch those scenarios and I'm like, in this one, I feel like you shouldn't say anything. Yeah, I know what you mean though. Like deathbed confessions to yeah. me are just like, who who was this for? Like that's just for your what? And your not always conscience? like the death, deathbed ones, but the ones where it's like, however many years have passed and it's just been like, weighing on their conscience. And I'm like, yeah, that's because you made the mistake. It's your way to bear. Don't ruin, sh you know what I mean? Like not ruin shit, but it's like, if you're not gonna do it again, oh, God, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. know how to describe it. You know what I mean though, I right? know what you mean. I know what you mean. I don't mean. What good does it do? What yes. purpose does it serve by divulging this information? Just that because only of your guilt. That person. Yeah. Right. So is guilt that selfish motivator? Yes, that's, I guess that's, right. that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Which I understand. Not that one's right or the other. That's why I was like, should I even bring this up? Because I right. was like, I don't even know how to verbalize it. Really. I know what you mean. Your guilt and you wanting forgiveness yeah. is selfish. Yes. In specific scenarios, because, not just cheating. Right. General. Not because you feel bad for me, because you feel bad for yourself. Yeah. Because so does that. You've been carrying around this guilt for how many years? And right. Ways, like, no, that's your burden now. So does that justify you opening up this whole fucking can of worms that I could have lived the rest of my life not having known and been none the wiser and have been happier, yeah. none, you know, irrespective of that? Yes. It's like God. that. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't think Ooh, it's something we have. Know. To, I'm one of those people. I, I want to know. I personally I wanna would know. want to know. Yeah. But and I guess I was thinking those, of that specific scenario without being able to verbalize it. But like, yes, those ones where it's just like, you just want to get rid of your guilt. Right. Yeah. Oh God. And That's if I, I were was the cheater, I don't know if I could live with that. Like the thought of me, like when I think about not cheating. If I think about if I had ever cheated on, like the guilt of even just thinking about cheating on my husband makes me feel horrible. Like I can't stand I have, that thought. I have cheated before. and I have too, but I just really love my this, this husband. <laughs> <laughs> but even those ones, there are times when I still think about it and I'm like, I feel like I should tell them even now. And I'm like, no, no. That's no. my guilt. I don't know, that's but then burden. there are there is something about, you know, making amends. I know. Do you Th make that's that where amends? It comes. I'm like, I just want to reach out and be like, hey, and I don't know if you know this, but I cheated on you and I'm sorry. Like, why the fuck do I need to know that? Fuck off. Yeah. Right. See? This is so when you're in the 12 step program and you're in AA, mm -hmm. there is something, there's a part of it where you make your amends, yep. where you come clean about everything you've done to that person. And I told my husband who was going to be making these amends to like his exes, to his friends, to his family. I'm like, this feels really selfish. It does, right? And that's why I said, I said, this feels so self-serving and it feels really selfish to me. And like, we had this like really heated debate about it. He was like, no, it's not about me. I'm like, it is a hundred percent about right. you. It's about you feeling like you need to make things right for you. They're fine. Yeah. They've moved on. But I get it from their perspective. Right. They need to do it so that they can have feel a better- clean. clean. Not only that, but they're like, I feel like addicts oftentimes have this like very- negative perception of themselves right. and this helps them to be like no we're making the amends we're doing the right thing so i get that part too but i do agree with you i personally feel like there is a selfish part to it because but 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 that's because it is right they need to do it for themselves let me go back into this person's yeah. life whose life i have not been in for yep. so long who probably moved on 
all of yep. these horrible, painful yep. things that I did to them, yep. and then be like, sorry about that. And then now they have to you deal I just with that. relived all of that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I agree. I but, was fine. But I, I didn't also understand that. how for them, they need to do it too. Right. So it's like- That's a very tough thing. Rock and a hard place That is a very thing. tough space to be in. Yeah. And I was very much like- You know, you stay up or you stay down. You do it just, yourself. You just- Do it yourself or like, don't do it at all. Just kidding. I know you're only five months old. <laughs> you're baby. Got you guys. Um, I also love how- Ron, who used to hide off on the side of the camera, now feels comfortable. He's like, I'm in. He's coming into the frame in the I middle of the- I am a personality on this now. I am just as much a part of this. Um, but yeah, that, that there's that like, am I selfish yeah. for wanting to fix this when it could have just been left alone? And as the person who is being made, you know, having amends made too, like, do I even care anymore? And will I feel better? Yeah. I don't know. I guess that's why I was bringing it up to the cab idea because it's yeah. like you knowing Chinese, that's a guilt you feel. No need to make it awkward for the rest of them because clearly well, whatever they're doing already is awkward for them. I don't think they should feel guilt for knowing what they know. I just think it doesn't serve a purpose for them to yeah. have to divulge it. That's what I mean. I feel like it's a similar-ish thing. Like you just feel guilty because you know what they're talking about. Maybe. I don't know if guilt is the right word for me. But it's like similar ish enough. Is it guilt or is it like shame? Not I shame. want you I want to disclose is more what it is. Like this disclosure of like I feel like it's I feel like you should know. I feel like it's secondhand embarrassment and you should just you should just keep Leave it, it alone. to yourself. Not everything yeah. needs to be made. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. You Angel need to sleep. Buddies. Oh, Prince, would you like to be propped up? Come here, buddies. You need a beds? You need a bedsies? He's like, I think I'm too big for this now. No, don't say that. Come here, buddies. Good night. Oh. That's okay. That's natural. Okay. Am I the asshole for tricking my roommate into eating mozzarella using a Korean hot dog because I suspected him of eating my food? I am so confused by this. What? <laughs> Eat my food by eating my food. I'm going to catch you eating my food. We need it. We need more information. That's so confusing. Okay. I recently moved back into my apartment. I shared with three roommates for college. I lived with them last year. No, you asked to come up. You're staying here. I was like, where do you see that? And... <laughs> <laughs> and one of my roommates always stole my effing food. His Are you fake... not saying the word fucking? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He always stole my fucking food. His <laughs> fake name, we'll just call him Tyler. Let me explain our food setup. We have one main fridge in the kitchen, surprise, and we've quartered off. Oh, okay, that's a lot. So each person gets an equal share of the fridge space, including the freezer. It's literally partitioned like with colored tape and dividers when applicable it says when is it applicable these guys are like engineers or something yeah so there's no way you can mistake someone else's food for yours we do this with the pantry too this sounds exhausting i know just God. imagining it is but exhausting but watching somebody eat all your food is frustrating but we do share, but only when asked. Anyways, last year, someone kept stealing my snacks, microwavable foods. I suspected Tyler for many reasons, but I never got enough evidence to get him to outright admit it. So I decided to do a little test. It's not a test. You did a reconnaissance mission. <laughs> that was completely harmless unless he was a thief. Oh, I'm really nervous for where this goes. I know. Because sometimes people do these things or they post about it and they don't realize it's illegal. Oh, no. Well, like we when don't people know are like, person. I put Tabasco in my milk. So whoever drinks, it's like, oh, that's illegal. Yeah. You, that's called poisoning someone. Yeah. Okay. A note about Tyler is that he absolutely hates mozzarella. What? It's like a weirdly intense hate. I agree. That's weird. Yeah. Apparently, he ate a ton of mozzarella sticks on a field trip as a kid and oh, he got food aversion. poisoning. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I bought these Korean hot dogs I saw on social media. It's like a normal hot dog, but the upper half is mozzarella. The bottom half is like a normal hot dog sausage. 
Actually, most times it's fish cake sausage. So Delish. Then I microwaved one for lunch the other day, ate the entire mozzarella half, and waited for Tyler to walk into the kitchen. I showed him the hot dog, now with only the sausage part visible, and talked at length about how delicious these new hot dogs I bought were. This could have been, like, easily avoided if you just, like, set up a camera in the kitchen. <laughs> Another You want to surveil your roommates? <laughs> you psycho. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Another thing to note is that I threw away the box of hot dogs came in, which I do for all my frozen foods for space purposes anyway. That's where it very visibly says it has a mozzarella half. The hot dogs were individually wrapped with the ingredients printed on there in super fine print, so it was hard to see. But if he could have read the ingredients and seen the mozzarella, he could have. Later on around 2 a.m., I hear Tyler literally yelp from his room. So I run in and behold, he took a big fat bite out of my hot dog. It was so funny. He tried to scream at me, but because the cheese was in his mouth, it came out like mozzarella. <laughs> you know that shit was hot too. He actually ended up puking onto his bed though. Oh. So I did end up feeling semi bad for that. It was a loud incident, so my other two roommates woke up and witnessed the aftermath. Mozzarella! <laughs> he did tease me about it. We did tease him about it. It was like panicking about cleaning the bed. We joked, oh, mozzarella, <laughs> just get your fairy <laughs> guna, guna mother. mother to clean it for you. Dorks. I thought that was pretty funny. I did not, even <laughs> though it was kind of cheesy. Uh -huh. He did not. Get it. <laughs> Anyways... Tyler is obviously flaming furious. I don't know why it has to be flaming. He thought he thinks it's, quote, my fault he puked, and that I, quote, lied about my fake hot dogs to trap him into eating mozzarella. That's literally what happened. Right. I argue that I never said the hot dogs did not contain mozzarella. Also true. I just never mentioned they did, and I didn't make him eat it. He thinks I'm the asshole who should buy him new bed sheets. I think he's an asshole for stealing my food. I think everyone's an asshole. I don't think you I owe think him everybody's a childish asshole. Um, what? Okay. I don't think you owe him new sheets, though. No. Tyler should not be taking food without asking. That is a rule that you guys have set for your living situation. Yeah. I mean, that's very clear when you color coordinate and partition things off. Holy. Like, it's not even like an unspoken thing. It's like very Wait, clear ours and yours. Right? Just sit the fuck down. Thank you very much. Jilly is sunning. She lays what the, the fuck she noise lays, is that? She lays in the sun and she does that. Oh, she's just enjoying herself. Between that and Archie screaming, ah, earlier, <laughs> what is happening <laughs> today? Um... The new bed sheet thing is dumb. Just Yo, fucking wash your sheets. Be a fucking grown up. Like if you're if you're old enough to partition a fucking refrigerator, you can wash a bed sheet. So that's yeah. stupid. Um, furthermore, like I think everyone's an asshole, but I think the guy who did the prank is the less least of the assholes. Well, it was barely a prank in that he was just like, "I am eating this food." It, it has a hot dog in it. It's not, not a like lie. it's not like Tyler is deathly allergic to peanut butter, and he's like right. get snuck in peanuts or something. You know, you, you don't know who the asshole is today, Archie. Who's the asshole today? It's me. I know it's me. He's like, I don't think you guys heard that weird noise a couple seconds ago. <laughs> there is a monster out there. Look how long his body's gotten? <laughs> oh, I think you're part dachshund. I don't know. Sometimes he looks long and sometimes he looks normal. Long is normal too, you know. Don't body shame me. <laughs> you asked to come up again. We'll pick you up and I'm going to complain about it. Um, so in that scenario, everybody is some type of asshole. But mostly Tyler. <sighs> he started it. I don't know. You know how I feel about sharing food. I feel like you should always share food, but. Yeah, but only in a sharing space. When not, it's been agreed upon to yeah. be shared. I understand. I know. I don't know. Maybe Tyler's hungry. But I also get it. Like, room food situations it's can so always get very complicated. I mean, shit, I get mad when my husband eats my snacks. <laughs> yeah, but it <laughs> really married. only happens when one person is consistently a taker. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. And it sounds like that's Tyler. Right. Oh. 
was like, is that a cat? That's my baby. It's a dying cat. Don't wink at me. I hope that makes it onto TikTok. Am I the asshole for not being interested in part of my ethnic background? Yes. Maybe. Isn't that, the, isn't that the point of the titles? So I'm half Chinese and Korean and was raised solely by my mom. My parents were college sweethearts, but when my mom got pregnant, my dad's family was furious because they expected him to eventually end up with a Korean girl. Ugh. Korean men and their families. This is going to be sinophobic a little bit, I can tell, because the Korean part. Mm, probably their ultimatum was to give up his girlfriend or his family. And you can probably guess who he chose. Nonetheless, I did grow up spending the occasional weekend with him. So I wouldn't say our relationship was entirely bad. Unfortunately, my dad passed away about two years ago. It was unexpected and sudden. His passing took a huge toll on his family and his mom taking it the hardest. She's been trying really hard to establish a relationship with me ever since my dad didn't have any other children. So I guess it's understandable. It was initially okay with spending time with them, but they've been really aggressive with forcing Korean culture on me. I've been dragged to church by them a few times. My aunts have tried pressing me into taking Korean classes. It's gotten to a point where I've started to ignore their calls and now they're contacting my mom to try to get a hold of me. Yes, even during a damn pandemic. And the fact that they don't like the Chinese part of me doesn't help. Every compliment is backhanded. My good work ethic is because I'm Korean. My intelligence is because I'm Korean. My dad's mom loves to talk about how pretty I am and how I obviously get it from my dad because my features don't exist for Chinese, despite me being the literal spitting image of my mom. The only reason why I agreed to spend time with my dad's family is because I felt obligated to. I was not interested in Korean culture and I don't feel Korean at all. They reminded me countless times that this is important to learn about my heritage and whatnot. But why? I think if everyone looks far back enough, we'll probably find different ethnic root. That doesn't mean that it doesn't hold any real value for us. My ethnic background is just my ethnic background. My mom and grandparents think I should be open to it. They acknowledge that how my dad and his family treated my mom was shitty, but ultimately my relationship with them is separate from their relationship with them. Still, at the end of the day, my mom's culture is where I grew up, what I grew up with and identify with. I can speak Chinese dialects. I accompany my grandparents to temple. I love Chinese food. I'm more Chinese than I'll ever be Korean. I generally don't think that there's anything wrong with not wanting to immerse myself into a culture that holds no real importance for me. So am I the asshole for not being interested in part of my ethnic background? I mean, no, no, I don't think so. You know, when you're mistreated by people who are the people that are closest to opening the door for you to that, to that background, and you feel like they've shunned you, it is perfectly understandable to me why you wouldn't want to have anything to do with that. I mean, I understand that. And maybe someday your, your opinion on that will change, yeah. you know, and maybe you'll- Hopefully. Because I feel like you're missing out on parts of right. your identity that right. would maybe help you or maybe help your children or something right. down the line. So for you, hopefully, but I don't think you're missing out on anything. Well, maybe not. Maybe not that part. But I don't think you're an asshole. I don't think you're an asshole. I don't think there's all. anything wrong with you for. I mean, I would hope that one day you'd be like, you know, I do want to get to know that part of myself. And I think that's perfectly valid. Also, it's equally valid for you to say, you know what? I don't really feel connected to that at all. And it doesn't make sense for me to to, to invest yeah. that time. Both are valid. Both are totally valid. And I don't think that's an asshole thing to think at all. And also I understand that pressure. Um, I understand that feeling of being like, well, you're only this good because of your X side or whatever. Um, you know, it's not even just race. A lot of times people do it just by like, oh, my mom's side of the family, dad's side yeah. of the family. Like, well, I mean, I tell my daughters all the time that they're beautiful because of me. Yeah, see? And that's just because it's true. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you know, I understand be, like what a turnoff, like what a turnoff, like you're going to basically degrade my entire other half of my family by saying that the only reason I'm worthy of anything is because of you, fuck you. Like yeah. I get that. No, that's, I don't like that. And that's why I jokingly said that earlier, the Korean a lot of a lot of Koreans have issues with sinophobia. Of course they do. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of like we're better than you. I feel like just in the East Asian culture in general, but Koreans specifically towards Chinese people. I've one time had an argument with an artist who's a really big time artist, by the way, and um, a big part of the reason I stopped 
associating myself with him at all is because of a conversation we had where he vehemently told me about how much he hates Chinese people. Korean guy? Yeah, and when mm. I told him that was super racist, he's like, no, it's not racist. I was like, that's pretty racist. Actually. I was like, that's kind of the definition of racist. I was right. like, you hate people because of their ethnicity. Right. I was like, that's... He's like, yeah, but then, like, but they are, like, I was like, mm, no, no, we're not doing yeah. that. We're not doing that. Yeah. So, no, I don't think this person was an asshole in the slightest, actually. I think her whole Korean side of her family is being an asshole. And, yeah. And it's crazy that after that many decades, they realize that their behavior is what ripped their grandchild away from them in the first place. And, and also, why did it take my dad dying for you to give a shit about me? Like now, now you care about me. Like but also on the flip side, sometimes your dad dies and they still don't give a shit about you. So, you know, could to, go either way. Yeah. yeah. That, that came from the, <laughs> the, the depths. That, yeah. that, was, that, was, that was personal. Yeah. <laughs> Am I the asshole for quote playing the race card when it's not about my race? Well, well. That really maybe, depends on which yes. way it is going. It depends. I, I hate that term playing the race card. That, that in and of itself is a red flag for me. To, when somebody says playing the race card, it's like, not a game, but okay. Yeah. Also, just because you're not of a race right. doesn't mean it's a game for the rest of us. Either way, my girlfriend is Korean and often cooks our meals. For lunch at work, I tend to bring leftovers, usually Korean food, specifically kimchi. I know kimchi can be pungent. Can be. It's not it pungent. It fucking better be. It's not good. <laughs> But honestly, I've never personally found it offensive. I can understand how others might, though. Yeah, if black pepper is too spicy for you, then yes. Recently, one of my coworkers has been harassing me to stop bringing it. <laughs> me and this coworker are not close, and really the only time she talks to me is to talk about how she doesn't like my food. It came to a head on Friday when she approached me again. This time, I could tell she was really upset. <laughs> I really hate your food so much. <laughs> I'd probably hear like a Peanuts version, like wah, 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 <laughs> yeah, wah, right. wah, wah, wah. At work, we have a three hour block that we can take a one hour lunch break during. That was kind of confusing. I offered a solution that I'd take my break during the first hour at 11.30, and she could take hers during any point of the other two. That way, she wouldn't have to smell my food. She got really upset, saying she shouldn't have to change her eating habits because I want to bring, quote, <laughs> disgusting food. Hmm, that seems a little hypocritical, but okay, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, way to not have any self-awareness. I said something along the lines of, quote, this is kimchi. It's traditional Korean food, what would you do if we hired an actual Korean person and this is what they wanted to eat? At this point, a few people were looking at us. The coworker backed down, but not before saying, you can't play the race card when you're not a part of that race. I don't think I'm the asshole for standing up for myself, but am I the asshole for bringing race into it? Real quick, just wanted to clarify, I'm not microwaving the kimchi. Also, the kimchi is brought, bought from the store and brought as a side dish with whatever leftovers is. It's only brought on days my girlfriend cooked Korean food the night before. What do you think? I'm thinking. <laughs> this is Susie's thinking face. <laughs> it's tough because I don't think he's the asshole for making a hypothetical, right? Because the hypothetical is if I were Korean or if somebody were Korean, would you say the same thing to them? Um, also, no. Okay, wait. No, it's it's his food. It's his lunch. He can bring whatever the fuck he wants. Shut up. If you don't like it, like, so what's the suggestion? You can't change the time that I eat, but you have to change what you eat. Like, you want to talk about changing yeah, dietary habits? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, that's insane. Like, no, you don't get to tell anybody what and where and how to eat. If you don't like it, then you can go eat. Whenever the fuck you I want. would you tell her shit exactly the what you kimchi can eat. is probiotics and it helps with your gut health. And then if you don't eat it, she can then resort to smelling your farts all day yeah. in the office or you're, every day. Yeah, exactly. Or you, why are you missing from work? Because you're constipated. <laughs> because you don't have a healthy gut biome. That's why. 
You have been missing an hour of work every day because you cannot go dookie yeah. because <laughs> you're not eating enough kimchi and that's your problem. I'm not at my desk during the three hour lunch break time period because for the one hour I'm eating lunch and for the other two, I'm trying to push up poop. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> because it is unhealthy. But I do, I do, it is a little tough because normally you don't want to bring other races into stuff. Sure. But in this one specifically, I do feel like it makes sense because it's like the word, the use of the word disgusting it's like we're kind of trying to highlight this person why it's problematic. Well, calling any food disgusting, I think, is just outrageous in this day and age. Like, Unless you're eating poop. That's not food. That is poop. Oh, baby Archie that, because that's uh, what he ate to survive. Oh, that was survival. <laughs> so bad. He looks fine now. <laughs> um, he looks totally fine. Um, no, I don't think you're the asshole <laughs> at all. Am I the asshole for telling my British neighbors they should learn Chinese because we live in China? What? <laughs> what? Am I the asshole for telling my British neighbors they should learn Chinese because we live in China? I mean. Oh, man. I hope this is what I think uh, I know exactly what the fuck this is. <laughs> I hope this is what it is. I saw Go summer, back to your country. <laughs> I saw a similar post which inspired me this. I'm Albanian and I live in Guangzhou, China. I live in an apartment building that is filled with mostly Chinese people and one British couple. They've been here three years longer than I have and can't say anything other than ni hao and xie xie. They constantly knock on my door or call me to translate Chinese stuff to which I told them to stop and start learning Chinese. I taught myself to be half fluent in Chinese before I got my work assignment and learned the rest in six months. In the six months I've been there, they managed to get by because some of the staff spoke English, but they left. I told them that they've been here for several years and should be at least conversational in Chinese. Yeah, Chinese is hard, but it's inconsiderate and rude to not put any effort into learning Chinese. I told them I'm never translating for them again and they lost their shit saying I'm an asshole for making their lives difficult. I told them I'll start speaking to them in Chinese and Albanian from now on. Damn right you will. No, you're not the asshole. Fuck. Fuck those people. Are you joking? Are you joking? Like, what? Like, Western people, particularly American and like European, specifically British people, going all over the world and expecting the rest of the world to cater to them is so outrageous and infuriating to me. Yeah. It is infuriating to me. Like, you want me, a Chinese person living in China to learn how to speak your language because you can't be bothered to learn how to have a simple conversation? Fuck you. Look, I don't think you have to, you don't have to learn the language. But don't be mad you if you don't know what the should. fuck's going on. Yeah, yeah, but then like, then don't call the person an asshole because you inconvenience them and use them as a resource and not and treat them as a human. nerve of calling on an Albanian person <laughs> to yeah. be like, can you translate this? Like. You want him to know three languages, Albanian, Chinese, and English to help you, but you can't be bothered to learn just the most basic conversation in the language of the country in which you live? Fuck you. Yeah. Go hungry, like for instance, don't know where to go, that's your fault. My grandmother like never really learned English, but like she also didn't like knock on our neighbor's doors asking for help and then call them an asshole. Demanding help? Yeah, so. Demanding it? No, absolutely not. But my, my grandma didn't speak a lot of English either, but she had enough to get by. Yeah, yeah, for what she needed. Like my yeah. grandma could navigate the entire Los Angeles bus system. Like she would end up, she would go start from our place and end up somewhere in downtown where she exactly she was going and be able to come back with barely any English. But she had enough, she knew enough. Also like that was at a different time too. We live in a time now in, in a day, in oh, what's happening with words right now? In a day and age, <laughs> Where we have like apps and stuff. You're telling Google me translate, you're motherfucker. Tell me in the three plus years you've been living there, you didn't find a, an appropriate app to use. How do you say water in Chinese? Mandarin. How do you say water in Mandarin? Oh, here it gives me all different kinds. Hold on. How do you say water in Mandarin Chinese? It's in Mandarin Chinese for water. Oh, you're not gonna pronounce any of them for us? There. 
I found four different fucking ways to say it. You can't even be bothered to learn one? You, no. But Screw them. That does make it a little bit scarier that there's four ways to say water. <laughs> which one is which? I know it's going to be like water for the shower versus water that for you drink. drink versus water that falls from the sky, <laughs> which is rain, which is it. different than actual <laughs> rain. Yeah, yeah that's Which true. is also different than the water that's in bodies of water. But yeah, right. <laughs> right. But that's fair. That's their language yeah. and they can do whatever they want with it. Yeah. I mean, yes, Chinese, Mandarin, Cantonese, the hundreds of other dialects of Chinese that there are really hard. Yeah. Any language with like inflections in voice uh, where the right where the change, same word with the different inflection is di yeah. different meaning is tough. It's tough. Yeah. Have you seen that trend on TikTok? Like, would you rather uh, give up drinking beer or learn to sing in Chinese? And all these people are like lip syncing into a Chinese song. It's so funny. It's really funny. What? It's like, would you rather stop going to Target or learn to sing a Chinese song? It's like, like it's much easier to stop going to Target than it is to learn Chinese, but they're, they've taken the time to learn this Chinese song, so they're like lip syncing to it. It's so funny. And people are tagging me and like, Don't, look at this racist video. I'm like, it's not racist, it's hilarious. What are you talking about? Like learning Chinese is hard. That's the joke. They're not saying anything, there's anything wrong with it, but it's tough. Oh yeah, I know this is completely off, but what about that trend that went happened recently where they played that super asian -y song? And it's the majority of like Latina girls being like, oh, I'm told that I look Everybody Chinese. Everybody says I look Chinese. Chinese. But I will say, somebody did this video about how there were a lot of Chinese people that settled in Latin American countries. And that is part of the reason why some Latin people look Chinese. Sometimes Asian people look Hispanic. My cousin looks a little Hispanic. When I when I used to when I used, when I used to live here when I was a little kid and I used to play outside all the time, I yeah. looked so tan with black hair that I kind of looked. Mexican. But that's because some Hispanic people look Asian yeah. and vice versa. Interesting. I also I think some of us also share the monolids. Mm, yeah. Which really make you look. Native Asian. people also have that too, yeah. which makes sense. I mean, you know. Yep. Yeah. Am I the asshole for ditching my date at the restaurant? Well, this is all going to depend on a lot of things. I can't wait to find this out This one's going to be juicy. Before anyone thinks this is fake. <laughs> God, why are you so paranoid? <laughs> yeah. Probably because it's that juicy. Let me assure you, I wish this was. Oh, I in buckle shock. in, everyone. This should be good. I, 26 male. God, I love when they tell us their identity. It just helps to picture. Paint the picture, yeah. yeah. Was recently, just recently went on a date with a 25 to maybe 28 year old female girl last Tuesday. We met at the gym. That is a weird place for a first. Oh, met at. Okay, never mind. No, I've had to. A, yeah, right. yeah. I've had a crush on her for a while and finally struck up a convo and asked her out. I booked us at a nice Korean restaurant that has Korean barbecue stations. So just a Korean barbecue restaurant. So we sit at the bar and have a pleasant chat for a few minutes and then. They tell us our table is ready. Then we go to our table. It's got a huge grill with a fire on it. And she instantly asks, what is this? Oh, God. This is in parentheses. Uh, how does anyone not know what Korean barbecue is? Well, it happens. Okay. Yeah. Let's give her the benefit Maybe of the doubt. You guys live She's in like Oklahoma. Uncultured. But <laughs> I brushed it off and explained to her that, explained it to her. And she was like, but. Why do we have to do all the work? Mm. LOL. Yes, she said LOL unironic. Oh, she said LOL. Out loud? Yep. She said, here we go. I'm going to read it again. In quotes. But why do we have to do all the work, LOL? Isn't that their job? <laughs> I hate when people say LOL out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. But you know what that's? To me, that's like being like, I'm angry right now. Like, this is my angry face. If you're no, like no, because LOL means that you're laughing, laughing. out loud, but you're not you're laughing not out laughing. loud. You're just saying LOL. So you laughing would be the laughing out loud. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> it's, it's so that's dumb. The there isn't an equivalent. Anyway. I explained to her that's what's fun about it. And we could always order off of the a la carte menu if she didn't want barbecue. But she said... Just make them do it for us. Ugh. And insisted on calling the waitress over and asking her to put the meat on the grill and demand it to be served after it was ready. 
This elderly Korean lady had to shuffle between busy tables and come and flip the meat and serve our plates. But wait, it gets worse. No, it was worse when you didn't stop her, but go on. So at this point, I'm super embarrassed and seeing red flags like crazy. Also, I'm Indian, so I'm kind of used to the whole servant master attitude thing because it's big in India, but I'm not a fan of it. And I thought it was super weird here in the States, but I wanted to see the date to the end. And yes, shamelessly enough, I was hoping for some adult time. Gross. Why are men? Men are ill. Ill is men. Man, gross. <laughs> At least he was honest about Ugh. it. This person is a fucking horrible person, but I still wanted to fuck her. Like, come on, dude. Maybe. Golly. <laughs> I'm going to put up with this. Ugh. At the end of the meal, she asked for dessert. I agree and asked to see the menu. The waitress comes over and gives the menu and hands it to her. She then waits for her to leave and says, my God, this place is a nightmare. All these useless immigrants. She's white. Come into the country and don't even work and eat up our tax dollars. That's not how tax works. Are they even legal? And she said it loudly enough that a nearby table of brown people in their 20s started giving her dirty looks and whispering to each other. She notices this and goes, same goes for these insert racist word for people of Pakistan. At this point, my jaw dropped. I'm Indian. And she used this in front of me. She saw my expression, went. It's just a joke. Oh, no. I don't mean Latinos. Oh. They're fine. I love Mexican food. Oh my God, this girl is a fucking mess. Oh my God. So it seems that she thinks I was Latino. <laughs> well, like we were just saying. <laughs> my birth country really never did come up as I speak with an American accent. And she uses a racist word against my own countrymen in front of me. Oh my God. So we get dessert. Why? <laughs> I would have just got up. I would have, oh, that was the whole point. Yep, that yeah. is what ends up happening, yeah. I hope you left her the bill. So we get dessert. I get up to use the bathroom, pay off the bill with a good tip. Good for you. You're better than me. And walk out the door. I left her there. I drove us. <laughs> and went back and blocked her number. Now I'm even thinking of switching gyms, but I'm just going to go in the morning. I don't know what I will say if I ever see her again. <laughs> Am I the asshole for ditching my date without transport at the restaurant? Wow, this blew up. Thanks for your support. Let me just address some points. It was funny to me she didn't know what Korean barbecue was considering. I knew it because I've never seen it in my country, and she lived here her whole life. And yes, the city has a Korean restaurant since the 90s. I couldn't be stuck in the car for 20 minutes with someone who thinks my people are trash. Also, I wasn't going to sleep with her after I actually got to know her. I didn't know she was this bad until the end. Initially, I just thought she had a strong opinion on self-service at restaurants. Also, I'm not going to tell you what the word was. Google it if you're interested. I don't no. think he's an asshole. I think he's a coward. Uh, that's what I think. I think for you to sit through dinner, allow her to treat staff poorly, make say racial slurs and then just be like, well, I'm just going to leave. I feel like is pretty fucking shamefully cowardly. I mean, it cowardly. makes for a funny story. It makes but... for a funny story. Um, I would have laughed just as hard if he had been like, so listen, I don't want to see you ever again. These for the following reasons. Um, like I'll let you like, you know, I don't know. Give me a rim job or whatever you wanted from her. <laughs> a rim job? Do you know what that is? Yes, I know what it is. <laughs> um, or, you know, whatever. But, you know, I have no interest in you other than that because I think you're a terrible person. I mean, Whatever. Whatever he wanted to say to her. Or, like, I don't know. Saying it after the fact is, I think, kind of useless because she's still going to just walk around the way she walks around. And the fact that she would use a racial slur against Pakistani people sitting as right an next Indian to person, yeah. right, sitting right next, like, to me, is just like, that should have been nipped in the bud. It should have been nipped in the bud. The, the fact that it got to dessert is crazy to me. I think the story is hilarious, but I do agree with you. Yeah. I feel like 
biting your tongue for the first couple, but after she said something, a racial slur to the people right next to well, you, once I would have Yeah, once it's out. been confirmed to you that it's not about like the table service and she doesn't like how Korean restaurants are set up, once you realize it's not about that and it's just that she is a straight up just fucking racist bitch, done. Yeah, I it's think over. it would have might've been equally funny if after she said the racist word and then said, I love Latinos, he should have just like turned over to them, spoke, in Indian, even if they don't understand, and just like join their table. I mean, that's a weird way to, to deal with that, but sure, why not? But um, just, I just meant like, <laughs> but just to show her, you know? But yeah. yeah. I think, you know, you know, the other day, um, I made this video. I was in Chinatown with my daughter's class for a field trip, and we were, we had gone to, um, what's that train station? The one. The train the, station. The metro. The big one. No, no, no. In, yeah, we went to Union Station. Oh, Union Station. We rode the train. We went, we toured Union Station and then we rode the train to Chinatown. And then we got out in Chinatown and we were doing this really cool tour where they were teaching us about these powerful women that influenced Chinatown and like what they did. It was really cool. I was so glad I was there. And while we were there, we were walking through this like little shopping center and there were these four like white guys in this like Winnie the Pooh, like oh. it looked like a hot tub, but it wasn't a hot tub. It was like a, a ride. And we are kind of maybe like 50 feet away from oh, where they are. Oh, I see where you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That thing, the quarter thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that place with the lanterns. Yes, and stuff. Yep, yep, exactly. I know what you're there. talking about. And I hear them, um, using like that fake Chinese accent and they're like mocking, you know, Chinese language, but they're filming content. Like I can see them filming content. And the only reason I'm thinking of this is because I made a video about it and I didn't say anything to them. I wanted to. You felt no, I'll tell you why. Cause I'm with my daughter and with 25, nine and 10 year old kids, I'm responsible for their safety and to make sure that everybody is accounted for. And I see that they're filming. So my mind goes, I want to go over there and tell them what the fuck is up and how they could be so disrespectful in fucking Chinatown, in front of a Chinese business, in front of kids, many of whom are Asian, me standing there, I'm fucking Asian. And for you guys to do that is so embarrassingly disrespectful. But then I was like, what if they get violent? What if something bad happens? What if they, you know, go off on me? What if they start throwing racial slurs at me in front of the kids? Or what if they start filming me and people see that I am in this viral video or whatever and see all the kids standing behind me in the classroom? And the reason I bring this up is because hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? So in my mind, this guy at the restaurant should have said something to her, should have been like, I don't know the, the real circumstances we may never know. But the reason I, I bring all this up is because it's like in the moment, it's so hard to know what to do. And it's so easy to be a fucking armchair expert and be like, I know exactly what I would have done because so many people in the comments of that video were like, you should have gone up to them. You should have said something like you want me, a middle-aged woman with my kids, go up to these four young adult men, tell them that what they're doing is wrong and then deal with whatever they decide to do about the situation, like no fucking way. Like it would have been potentially dangerous. I, I don't even know how I seg segued into that story, but I was like, I wanna talk about it because I've, I've been really pissed off that so many people are telling me that I should have done something, should have said something, really? So let's say one of these kids is like, fuck you, you old bitch, and punches me in the face. What do I do with 25 screaming kids now? What do I do? How do I explain to my daughter? that I went up and tried to do the right thing and it got me punched in the face. How, how do I explain to my daughter that like, you know, just, well, you just now have to just let people be racist in front of you. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was just like so many scenarios going through my head. So like, I get it. And I get it because I was being so demonstratively like, you should have done this, you should have done that. Every situation is different. You never really know how it's gonna end up. So yes, now I, I retract a little bit. <laughs> I was like, and this is a journey. Leaving her at the restaurant is fine. <laughs> and hopefully she got the message in just that. I mean, she did get her due, her due, de her dessert. She get just desserts. just desserts. Wow. I can't believe that took that long for that to come through. <laughs> <laughs> she got her just desserts. There it is. <laughs>
Yeah, I don't know what I would do. What did happen? Nothing. Nothing. No one said anything. Who could, how could they? No, I meant like outside of your group. Well, there weren't that many people around. Um, I wish I was there. I wish, yeah. And under different circumstances, like, like that time that that dad slapped his daughter in that restaurant in Malibu, I went fucking off. Oh, yeah. I went off. I was by my, I was with other adults in a crowded restaurant. It was one man. You know what I mean? So it's like there, you have to really assess like the situation before you can just kind of like go off. I don't think, I don't think she would have done anything in this, this scenario, but like in other scenarios, like you have to be, you know, more mindful of like what's going on. I knew there were surveillance cameras in the restaurant. I knew that, you know, he was an older guy. I might've been able to take him <laughs> if it got physical, but this was four like guys and they're like 19 to like maybe 25. If they attack me, I'm, I, I might get one or two of them, but like, I'm not going to get all four. I would have been like you, you, and you record everything that's happening. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like I, I wanted to, I wanted to so no, yeah. bad. But... I wouldn't do that just because then parents would be, you, you would, you're right. putting them at risk. Right. Or like, no you know, worst case scenario is like you walked away from my kids on a field trip just so you could like go and berate these people. Like that wasn't your responsibility. Your responsibility was to take care of my kid banished from field trips ever again. Yeah. Now I'm not willing, you know, I'm not gonna take and that risk. In this scenario, yes. I don't think any conversation with her would have gone through. Yeah, she there's that too. She seems like she is just beaten with the ignorant stick right. for her whole life. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like this might've been the most appropriate thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And now that I've taken my feelings out of it and looked at it through the lens of like, what really was the expectation? Cause that was another thing too, right? Was I really expecting these four like white 20 year old kids to be like, you're right. The things that we're doing are harmful to the Asian community. And the, for us to have the audacity to come into their space and behave this way is unacceptable. Ma'am, you are absolutely right. Please enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> it's like, that's not gonna fucking happen. It's not gonna happen. And her being like, you're right. People move to this country and they work so hard to try to make a living. And I am not seeing that clearly. But now that you've pointed it out, I really appreciate this this yeah. restaurant and the food in it. And this older Korean woman is is now my personal hero. Like, Yeah, and I think that's the oftentimes why a lot of times when things happen, people don't know what to do, but like record. Yeah, right. Because then at the very least, it's like there's evidence of something. I was so happened. worried that if I started filming them that they'd start. Oh, yeah, no, them. I don't I don't mean you. Oh. I've just been like, when people are like, why did you do nothing other than just record? It's like, because I didn't know what else. What else could I do? do. Right. But at yeah. least with a recording, you have evidence to then be like, maybe I can do something right. after the fact, you right. know? But okay. yeah, I'm even trying to think now. I don't know what I would have done. Probably just recorded them. <sighs> it was tough. It was really tough. And it was even tougher for me to not say something. Like yeah, I, I was very loudly having this conversation in my head. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Don't do anything. No, fuck them. You should absolutely go say something. But if you say something, I was like angel yeah. devil on my shoulders. But if you say something and it goes bad, then what are you gonna do? No, these kids are your number one priority. Don't worry about them. Yeah, not take, those kids. And then, right. And then I took it, I was like, oh, I'll just take it to TikTok because there I have more power. In, the, in this scenario. And that's why I don't, I mean, I don't know if the video is ever gonna see the light of day or if they actually are gonna post the video of them in the oh, Winnie the Pooh. Video. Yeah, because I know they were filming. So now people know. How old were they? Probably between like 19 and like 23, oh, so 24. Way too old. Oh, way too old. To know, way too old. To not know better. Yeah. yeah that's fair. I know. And I, I saw one of them, it was like, he was like maybe 20 and he was younger, like dirty blonde hair. Cause I'm glaring at them. I am daggers shooting from my eyeballs, standing next to the fucking Bruce Lee fucking statue. Oh yeah, I definitely know where you are. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking Bruce Lee, you motherfucker, <laughs> like, you know? So he saw me and he was kind of like, like ashamed looking. My my fantasy is that he's like, oh shit, that's that Asian lady that drags people to filth because of their racism. That's why Don't sometimes, post the video. That's why sometimes I do record them because sometimes if they, notice that you're recording they're like oh yeah i don't maybe we should yeah not do this right now at least right anyway but also i'm a guy who's six foot one and implications are a little bit different right actually a lot different one more real quick no it's one two one twenty three okay. we'll do more next week no i know i was just trying to think oh. how to segue from what i just said 
Well, on that note, it's been a while. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, speaking of desserts. Speaking of food, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that is her second. My husband's bringing my salad. Oh, uh, California Chicken Cafe. Again. Probably. <laughs> it's our, it's our staple for Tuesday afternoons. He's so cute. He's like, I'm coming home with a salad. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> On that note, I'm thank hungry. you for sticking with us and for not abandoning us for having ditched you so abruptly for the last, what, two weeks? Yeah. Sorry, that was my fault. It was, welcome to season two. <laughs> I'm hungry. I know, I'm hot. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Just is, that how, is that how we end season two? <laughs> Uh, but seriously, on that note, thank you for joining us on yet another episode or the first episode, technically, of season two. Archie, um, you're being so weird. doesn't know what he wants anymore. That's all right. Either way, uh, thank you for. Uh, nope, already said that. You can find us on our socials. You can find me at Sujo One on TikTok and Instagram. I'm at Etch a Sketch with a J on all the socials. This little. Am I the asshole is, nope, don't like that one. This little guy is at Archie and Colt on Instagram. Otherwise, you can find us at What in the Shibar, that's S H I B A L, on the socials as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're Mm, if you're not watching this, mm, if you're listening to this podcast, know that there is also a video version on YouTube. And if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the Archie bell. And if you would like to help us keep this podcast sustainable, please think about joining the Patreon. Do Otherwise, it. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to go get something to eat. Okay, bye. Oh, oh shit. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs>